All right. I think we are live with Jason Secor. Uh, hey, Jason, I wanted to have you on here. Um, you've done a real awesome job focusing on what is my core building block number one for the Ultimate Business Blueprint. And specifically, um, I know you started off by sort of doing all your inside sales and, and lead converting and following up on your own, sort of owning that for your team. And you've since spent the last couple years really offshoring and going uh, going offshore with your inside sales efforts. So uh, give me like 30 seconds on you know why you chose real estate and what you think ultimately this uh, this business can do for you? I think, uh, well, you know, first off is I was in a totally unrelated thing. I was pursuing uh, church work and, and ministry and uh, God has a sense of humor and I'd said I was never going to be in business and uh, so here I am. So Red Rich at Fort Ad, um, through a series of events, led me into real estate via the mortgage business and generating, uh, falling in love with marketing and uh, realizing through Rich Dad Poor Dad, I wanted a business that uh, supported me, not a uh, not a self-employed position that I had to go work for. So I wanted to build a business that I could step away from to live the life I wanted with my wife and kids. So that's kind of how I found real estate and what I'm looking for it to do for me. Awesome. All right, cool. So um, so take me back and kind of explain your you know I, so so what I teach is you know a buyer. A buyer platform, a buyer internet leads, some sort of way to generate massive amount of buyer leads, convert those leads to face-to-face -to -face appointments, get them to be loyal to you, sell them a house. That's sort of the basis. That's how I built my business, and that's what you've been been working on, and specifically the offshore model. So, talk to me about the evolution of buyer internet leads in your business and how it's um, going to serve as the foundation of your business going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I start back in the before you know 2004 2005 I guess is when it was doing uh, online web marketing for leads and you know evolved kind of through the things used uh, you know different pretty much I've owned every different platform you know out there for buyer lead gen with the exception of Boomtown uh, which I know a lot of other people have and so now we currently use Commissions Inc and you know, I think the big thing is realizing first off a buyer lead the buyer lead so it doesn't matter which platform you have um, you know, an, an internet buyer lead is an internet buyer lead. And I would even, you know, I know this is one of the pillars you teach is, you know, sign calls. And I mean, those, those are great leads. So I think the thing is getting the buyer leads. And for us, it's evolved into where it's going to be a self-sufficient pillar in our business through the systems we set up. And uh, offshoring has been a big part of that, which is why we're talking today. So, yeah. So, so go a little bit into, um, you know, you your your early days frustration with your agents and how they didn't kind of do what yeah. was required and, and then yeah, kind of well, go into you know you kind of bringing back the reins and then ultimately yeah. teaching your offshore ISAs go through that for me yeah you know very early when we uh, when we started online lead generation is we brought in multiple agents and we were we were handing them the leads and saying okay Here's the process. Here's exactly what you do. Here's the script. Here's the emails. Here's everything you do. Go, go make it happen. And we had the accountability meetings each week, and people would come back, and their leads wouldn't be followed up on. And and after about six months of this and beating our heads against the wall, you know, I, I went in, into them and and we basically said, hey, look, you know, I'm and, and I've got enough. I'm a DI personality, and the D in me came out, and I was just like, okay, I'm taking this over. I'm going to show you how it's done. And then we're going to reevaluate how this is working. And so, within 90 days of taking that back over, we'd already closed multiple deals. We had a pipeline full of buyers, and it was just from the follow-up. And so, very early in my marketing lead generation career, it I I, I became of the mindset that the that the follow-up lead setting, appointment setting, inside sales, whatever you want to call it should be controlled by the Rainmaker team leader in some capacity because just as a whole, agents are good at a lot of stuff, but generally if they're good at writing contracts and good at the appointments, they stink at, at this call and, you know, the call and leads. And then if they're good at call and leads, they don't want to go do the appointments and the, and, and the show in the houses and that stuff. So I just saw real quickly that there was a distinct division of labor right there and just started building my business based on that from that point forward. 
And so tell me as a result of doing that, so you've gone you've gone deeper in this model than, you know, so I have a local buyer I say we're a couple years behind you as far as offshoring. So that's my one project for this year is actually working with you as sort of my, my mentor to help me figure out the offshore model. Um, but um, so as a result of breaking up the job of outside sales and inside sales, how has that helped your profitability? What, what are you able to pay your agents? Because that's one thing. So, so when I coach teams around the country, um, even some big freaking teams selling 200, 250 homes ain't got no profits. You right. know, so it's like it's all it's all cool to sell 250 homes, but if you don't have any money at the end of the day, and the number one reason is because they're not really laying out the value chain. You know, so that mastermind a couple years ago in January, um, where you were just kind of busting out your numbers on the buy side, where you know average commission check in your market is about six thousand dollars, and you were kind of breaking it up. And and the thing I remember most about that, which really stuck in my mind which is why I value your opinion in this area so much was that, you know, your ability to generate a lead, convert the lead or follow up the lead, get them to come to your office, sit and listen to a presentation and sign a loyalty agreement of the 6,000 bucks that, that's on the table. There is a lot of value wrapped up in, in that part of it. They're showing the homes and writing a contract you know, contract to close, I think you've got handled with admin. So the, the the part that the agent does, you don't have to pay a whole lot for that part. So how do you how do you work compensation on your team? Basically, uh, our agents receive uh, twenty five percent of the of the commission, and uh, and I know I know a lot of people on the call or you know or, or webinar are gasping, going, "How do you get away with that?" And and what I would what I would tell you is. We've got to retrain the industry to think in terms, and, and the people we build on, in terms of seeing the value. And a hundred, a hundred percent of no deals that they convert on their own aren't going to go buy groceries. They've never accepted a hundred percent split at any grocery store near me. So you've got to talk in terms of dollars generated. And so we've got to, we've got to speak to potential agents on our teams in terms of if you're going to go this model in terms of. Work, you know, how much money do you need to generate? Okay, great. This is how many transactions, and this is how our system that sets appointments up for you is going to deliver. Um, which we have all that track, which you know, using our smart sheets, and you use Google Docs, and so we we can show an agent looking to come on board our team those numbers and and how it's going to equate to net income, which is what they ought to care about. Yeah, and I've got a similar. I'm going to bring up your document. You can't see it here, but. Uh, this is Jason's version of my buyer appointment tracker. I actually copied slash you know modeled mine after his, um, but he tracks every opportunity. So an ISA makes an appointment, they go onto a form online. So they can't get into this actual spreadsheet, but they can go on a form online. They fill it in, then the company, your team manages the outcome and takes notes and makes sure the most was made of every opportunity. So you'll have access, everyone on this call will have access to a similar um, tracker uh, through my system. But um, so, okay, last, last 30, 60 seconds here, Jason. You know someone who's, you know, maybe they're doing 10, 12 deals. They, you know, they, they're kind of maybe getting a little busy. They're thinking about going down this path of, of maybe acquiring one of these big platforms, starting a team, bringing on buyer agents getting some inside salespeople, hiring some staff, all the awesomeness and craziness that goes along with that. Give a couple a couple words of advice to uh, to someone that's looking to do that on this uh, on this webinar. You know, I think the uh, you know, obviously the obviously the first thing and you know I believe in this is is you need to get a coach of some sort just to kind of have make sure you're make make sure you're not going down the path that's going to uh, going to lead you to dis disaster. So and it's also easy to get sucked into the buy side, which you and I have had tons of conversations on. So it's really making sure you've got that roadmap, whether you create the roadmap or you have a coach to help you create the roadmap or whatever. And and don't don't go the ISA route too soon. I mean, uh, there, there, there's something to be said for just you know putting on the work boots, picking up the phone and dialing for dollars and doing it yourself until you're at a level where it makes sense to go out and do that and your profitability uh, allows you to do that without putting stress on your business. And the other the other thing I'd say is, you know, li li listing list to last. I mean, that's still a true statement in this business is, is don't, 
don't get so caught up in the shiny buyer platforms, although that is the pillar that I started my business with, uh, and overlook the, the listing opportunities right before your eyes because those listings will, you know, give babies in the forms of buyers and other listing opportunities. So that'd be my big advice is, uh, you know, don't, don't jump out of the buy side and do an ISA too soon and not convert yourself and be the rainmaker. And then uh, don't, don't get so hung up on the shiny, you know, buyer syndrome in the terms of I got so many leads through my new whatever website that uh, you, don't, you don't pay attention to the tried and true listing side of the business. Yeah, and shiny objects are the kiss of death. I actually go, I'm going over that on, on today's, uh, today's agenda. But, um, and the other thing you mentioned there, which you didn't go too deep into it, and you and I both were our, our main ISAs for several years in our business. And that's something that, you know, every agent is looking to abdicate that responsibility uh, way, way, way too soon. So if you're going to lead a team and have them prospect and, and follow up or, you know, go the ISA route at some point, um, you know, the core building block number one is essential. But like Jason said, and, and, and what I teach is as you're doing that, as you're getting that system in place, you're working expires, you're working FISBOs, you're working your sphere, you're getting listings, you're using the right scripts on all those buyers to make sure you're listing homes that they have to sell. So, um, Jason, sure. man, I appreciate your time. Um, that's all I got for you today, but uh, keep on just kicking butt there in Birmingham, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man.